Do you have a Brunswick or an Olhausen pool table and you want it to play more like a diamond table that you play on on the pool hall? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how to do it. Welcome back to Creative Restorations. My name is Doug Giles. You know, it's a growing trend that a lot of pool halls are switching over to diamond pool tables. And if you play a lot of pool and you've played on diamond pool tables, you'll, you'll probably have already come to the conclusion that the pockets on diamond pool tables are tight. But guess what? This is a Brunswick. And as you can see, Two balls will not fit in the pockets simultaneously. So I want to show you how to go about doing that today, but stick around to the end of the video because eh, you may or may not want to do this and I'll tell you why at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get into making your table play more like a diamond. So we're going to start off by taking the cover off of the table and as you can see our existing color, our, our color cloth that we have on there is like a burgundy. We'll take the cover off of the table and clear off the top. Now this table, the customer decided he was going to remodel the room that the table was in and he decided to get some extra work done on the table while we were moving it. So I go around and I'll pull out all of the rail bolts and this is a Brunswick Contender Series table, and all of the rail bolts are located directly underneath the diamond. So wherever you see a diamond, there's a rail bolt. And while I'm busy doing that, David's going to come in and pull all the staples holding the fingers of the pockets up underneath. And once all that's done, we'll go ahead and we'll take the rails off of the top and flip them over. And I do it, I always do it in two separate halves. Then we'll take the pockets off. Because for doing this, you don't need to disassemble the entire table. You don't need to move it or anything like that. All you need to do is get to the top end of the table. Now I'll go around and I'll start plucking every single staple holding the rails on. One thing I can't stand is to shoot another staple there and have that, that wire staple curl back around and then you got to pull it out again. Don't want to do that. So I make sure to go in and pull every single staple. It's tedious, but it's worth it. Once you do that, go, right, go back behind it. And I use a pair of wire cutters gently and just pull them out. Now, once we've got all of the staples pulled out, it's time we'll go ahead and pull our cloth out. And it came out pretty easy on this one. There's our feather strip. We'll set that off to the side. And now we're gonna go with additional rail facings. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see I have five millimeter rail facings, and on the left-hand side, I have three millimeter rail facings. Combined, we're going to have a total of eight millimeters. And I'm using barge cement and just a little tiny half-inch brush. And we're going to go with glue right smack on top of the existing rail face. Make sure you get it com coated completely. And we'll flip the rail around and we'll get our corner pocket. Now the existing rail face that's on there is about three millimeters. And like I said, we're gonna add in an additional eight millimeters. So if you take that eight millimeters and double it, since you have two sides to the pocket, 
that's 16 millimeters or just at 5 eighths of an inch that we've taken out. We're going to tighten the pockets by roughly 5 eighths of an inch. Now the, rather, the rail facing that I'm holding in my hand right there is one of the 5 millimeter ones and we're going to lay that one down first. So we're going to coat out both sides. Coat out both sides with your barge glue. Give it a good coat. And if you're unfamiliar with barge cement, it's basically contact cement. It's an industrial grade contact cement. Cobblers use it to adhere shoe soles to shoes. Um, it's great for adhering rubber to wood. It's great for adhering rubber to rubber, leather. You know, I use barge cement for a, a whole bunch of other projects. Now, if you notice, I, I coated out both sides of that five millimeter rail facing. And since both sides are coated out, I want to stand it on edge so that it dries. Now I'll coat out the three millimeter on one side only. And again, like I, I, I'll tell you this again at the end of the video, I'm going to leave links down below for most all of the tools that I'm using for this project. I'll leave links down below so that, you know, you can do this yourself. So we coat out one side of the thinner rail facing, the three millimeter, and then we'll grab our long five millimeter, and again we're going to coat out both sides of it. Make sure to get a good coat, good heavy coat on there. Oh, and by the way, expect to get uh, barge cement on your fingers. It's inevitable. It's just gonna happen. There's nothing you can do about it. But once it starts to dry, you can actually rub your fingers together really hard. and It'll pill up, kind of look like boogers on your fingers. But it's not boogers. I promise you, it's not boogers. It's barge cement. So we've got our five millimeter long rail facing coated out. We'll stand that one on end. And then we'll coat out our thinner three millimeter long, three, uh, three millimeter comma long rail facing since that one's going on the top. It's a good idea if you have a helper, let him be busy stripping the rails while you're coating everything out. So once those are coated out, we're going to set those off to dry. It takes about 30 minutes for it to set up properly. Then we'll go in and first we're going to put our five millimeter rail facing down. Remember, both sides of this are coated out, so you don't really want to touch it and get oils from your skin or anything like that on that glue. And then after your five millimeters down, we're going to put our three millimeter right smack on top of it. And you want to go right to the edge of where that old rail facing is, where you're, the rail facing that the factory put on. We're going to go right to the edge of that, the back edge. Once you've got it on there, you want to come back and hit it with a hammer, knock out any air bubbles, pop any air bubbles, and make sure you've got good adhesion all the way clean through it. So we'll show you again on the opposite side. We're going to take our five millimeter rail facing. As you can see, this one's a bit thicker and it's coated out on both sides. And we're going to set it right smack, even with the back end of that. 
I'm just lightly touching it just to hold it in place. And then we go back with our three millimeter. Now this is a contact cement. The barge glue is a contact cement. So you have to coat out both sides and you stick those, those coated out sides together. Once they're down, go back and tap it down with a hammer. Again, ensure that you got good adhesion all the way across. Now, usually I have my Dexter uh, knife that I use for cutting rubber, but in the, I just didn't bring it with me. So I do carry a sharp, pretty sharp pocket knife and a pocket knife will work. And we're going to cut off most of the excess. You don't want to cut it all off. Because again, if you watched one of my, uh, if you watched my other video on how to replace the rubber on your table, you'll fit, you'll know that I'm a big advocate of slowly sneaking up on making those edges perfect across there by using a grinder. Now I use an angle grinder with a metal cut off with a metal grinding wheel, not a cut off wheel, but a metal grinding wheel, and with an extremely light touch. I'm just going in and lightly passing it and then I'm going to check to make sure that it's flat. If it's not flat, do it a little bit more and you want to make sure that it's fl completely flat all the way across. So you want the same profile from the rubber and the top of the rail, the wood, you want everything to be perfectly even. So once everything is even on the, the bottom, we'll come back and get round over the top. And if you're going to try it with a with a grinding wheel, I would suggest a brand new grinding wheel since they have they are perfectly straight across. I've been doing this for a little while. I can use a slightly worn out grinding wheel and that's a little bit curved on it. But again, very, very, very light touch. And then when you're all done, you want to slightly round over the end by using a, a bit of 60 grit sandpaper. Now you can do this project without using a grinder. Um, it will take additional time. You can you can sand out that rubber by using some 60 grit or 100 grit sandpaper on a sanding block to make sure it's nice and nice and straight across there. And then once you've got that, then it's just a matter of going back in and recovering the rails. And we went with the again, we went with the championship tour edition cloth on this table in Euro blue. pound in our feather strip and come back and cut off our excess on the back side and cutting off that excess if you're not uh, if you're not very very careful with it it is very easy to slip and cut the main portion of your cloth I've done it before haven't done it in a long 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 while but I have done it it's not fun so we've got that and then we'll come back and we'll pound our feather strip in the rest of the way. My pounding block that I'm using there is a piece of lignum vitae. It's supposed to be one of the hardest woods in the world. Uh, I've gone through, I couldn't tell you how many pounding blocks I've gone through over the years. And uh, that one that I have there is probably the best one that I've ever run across. Uh, I've tried oak. I've tried poplar, I've tried other hardwoods, and either they splinter up or they end up mashing down or something, but they, uh, they never end up holding up for very long. That piece of lignum vitae is probably three or four years old and it looks like it's never been used. Now, one thing that I will do if the feather strips happen to be a little bit loose, I will go 
on the waist side, which is the inside of the feather strip, and I will add in one very small uh, nail in the areas where the cloth is the loosest. If, the, if I don't feel as though that that feather strip is giving adequate uh, a adequate uh, tension or enough friction to hold the cloth in, I will add in a short one inch, maybe one and a quarter inch uh, finishing nail. But you don't want to use anything ring shank or anything like that that's going to be difficult to pull back out. So, and again, you want to do that on the inside portion of the feather strip. Now when I'm doing champion when I'm doing the tour edition cloth or Simona's cloth, I do add additional staples. I put my staples closer in together. Because it's a worsted cloth and because of the type of weave that it is, if you don't do additional staples and, and your staples closer in, you will end up with streak marks running across your table, uh, running un, I'm sorry, underneath your rails and it's much easier to prevent getting dimples in your rails. That's one of the hardest things to doing a set of rails is learning the, um, the correct amount of pressure that you're going to pull on that cloth. Too much pressure and you're going to end up with dimples on the, the nose of the rail. Too little pressure uh, and you're going to end up with loose cloth and you're going to end up with wrinkles. So it's a, it's a balancing act and it takes takes quite a few years of experience in doing doing cloth and doing upholstery work to learn how to massage that cloth just so to where you don't end up with wrinkles and you don't end up with dimples. Now the staple gun that I use here, I've, I've got it linked in one of my other videos and I'll provide a link down below if you're interested in getting one of these Senko staple guns. It's a 22 gauge wire stapler, shoots uh, 3 8 inch uh, crown staples and typically I'll go back and forth whatever my local supplier has either uh, 3 8 inch legs or half inch leg staples that's typically what I'm going to use when I do outdoor pool tables I use uh, stainless steel staples for that so I flip the rail over before I trim anything in case I have to take it all back apart I check everything to make sure that it's right and it is and then we'll go back and we'll trim off all of our excess. So we get our excess trimmed off here. And after we're done with that, we'll flip it over one more time and check it out and everything looks good and then we put it all back together now as you can see from the from this photo here two balls will not fit in the rails at one time so we've sub we've narrowed down the pockets by about five eighths of an inch, close to three quarters of an inch. And as you can see, our customer here is, the lineup is shot and he misses the first time. He's gonna set it back up for a second shot. He looks pretty happy with it. The second shot, right on target. So there you go. That's how you tighten the pockets on your pool table. It's not that hard, really. But there are some reasons why you may not want to do this. And maybe some things that you hadn't thought about, you know, like maybe you thought you were going to reuse the rail material on your table. No, you can't reuse the rail material. Number one, you know, you've just made the rails longer. So, you know, that's obviously not going to work. So you're going to have to, at a minimum, replace the rail material. Now, if you go to replace just the rail material, unless you're buying the material off of the exact same bolt from the exact same manufacturer in the exact same color, and everything has to be identical, chances are the colors are not going to match, especially if your cloth is a little bit older. 
If your cloth is a little bit older, it's definitely not going to match. So be prepared for that. If you're willing to accept off-color rails and keep your bed cloth, well, you can do that. If you don't want to do that, well, now you're looking at the additional expense of recovering the entire table. That can be a little bit expensive. If you're Another thing, if you're doing this, I would expect that you're a more proficient pool player and you're going to want to play on a higher end cloth. That's also more expensive. So you definitely don't want to do this if you're planning on going back with, you know, championship invitational cloth or invitational with Teflon or any of the other brands out there that are entry level or home level cloths. You just don't want to do it. Okay, so that's number one. That's the one reason why you might not necessarily want to do this. The second reason why you might not want to do this is, well, those pockets are going to be much, much, much tighter. And believe me, you're going to get frustrated with all of the missed shots that you go to make. Trust me, I know because I've been in the pool halls and I've played on diamond tables and it really does get frustrating. You get used to shooting on, on, especially if you're used to shooting on bar tables, on the coin-operated tables, because the pockets on those are like buckets. Well, you know, Brunswick tables, home tables, uh, Olhausen tables, the pockets aren't quite like buckets. They're, they're standard size pockets, and you can comfortably fit two, two balls all the way down and pocket two balls at once. On diamond tables, you can't. As you can see from here, you know, those balls are touching and they're nowhere near dropping into the pocket, okay? You're gonna get frustrated. So that's the second reason why you might not want to do this. If you're not willing to take the time and dedication to perfecting your game and perfecting your, your angles, and you're the type that gets frustrated easily about that, then don't do this, okay? Now there's two different ways of going about tightening the pockets the way that I showed you just now and then there's a slightly better way of doing it. and this is the way that the manufacturers well you're gonna try to mimic what the manufacturers or what diamond would have done from the factory and that's have tighter pockets from the get-go so what do I mean by that well instead of going right back over the top of the rail facings themselves with in this case, in my case, I went with an eight mil, I'm sorry, a five millimeter and a three millimeter rail facing stacked on top of the existing rail facing. What you'd want to do is you'd want to build that up using wood on the wooden section of the rail behind the rail facings. You'd want to build that up with wood, glue it in place, epoxy it in place, preferably glue, but, and then, you know, get yourself new rubber and install new rubber that is the actual length all the way across. That way you only have one rail facing across it. You, and you're pretty much mimicking exactly what the manufacturer would have done to begin with. That's slightly better. Now, the way that I did this table, it will work just fine. It will serve my customers' uh, needs for the next 20 years. Well, not, the cloth won't last that long, but you know, tightening the pockets, what we did with the rail facings on here, it'll last 20, 30, 40 years, no problem whatsoever, assuming that the rubber holds up that long. So I guess in closing, think this through before you decide to do it. If you decide to do it, you need to be committed to perfecting your game because it's going to get really frustrating. Expect the additional expense of more cloth. And if you do it the, the upgraded way where you're adding in additional wood, expect new cloth, new rubber, new rail facings. I'm gonna leave links down below to all of the products that I used. Uh, you can go on my website, billiardsofneworleans.com to buy your cloth, to buy your rail facings. I don't sell barge glue on there, but I will leave Amazon links down below for the barge glue um, and any other miscellaneous tools that you might need. The, you saw I was using the staple gun. Oh, and one other thing, we did do a video, the complete video of the install of this table and recovering. So if you wanna see how to recover your table using the 3030, the Tour Edition cloth, 
Make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification because that's the next video that I plan on uploading. So until then and until next time, y'all take care and get good at playing pool. See y'all later.